This is part 7 of my QuickSocket I.O. tutorial. In this part, we are going to talk about rooms. Uh, rooms is a feature of the Socket I.O. server that allows the application to create groups of connected clients. And, and then uh, using the emit uh, function to send an event to the group. So all the members of the group will receive the event. So to demonstrate how that works, uh, I'm going to implement something somewhat similar to what we did with broadcasts. So with, with the broadcast feature, we were broadcasting the number of connected clients to all the clients. So what we are going to do now is when a client connects, we are going to uh, assign randomly a group to it. So we are going to put the client either in room A or in room B. And then uh, whenever the count of clients in a room changes, we are going to broadcast the number, the updated number, only to that room. So um, let's add counts for our two rooms. And then uh, here we can randomly uh, randomly assign clients to rooms. So I'm going to import the random uh, package from Python and then here in the connect handler I'm going to randomly assign a client to a room. So if, if the random value is uh, above 0.5 we are going to put the client in room A. So we do that with the enter room function. And this function takes the SID of the client as first argument and the name of the room as a second argument. And the name of the room is completely application specific. Uh, we can use any names here. So I'm going to call this one A. And the other one B. So there we go. Now we have uh, clients going randomly to a room. Uh, so we can use this uh, conditional uh, to update our counts as well. And right here we can send an updated count to the room. So we, uh, we use once again the emit function. Uh, we can call this event room count. Uh, the, uh, the count is going to be the one for the A room. And to specify that we want to send this event only to the participants that are in the A room, we use the same two argument, but instead of providing the SID of a specific user, we give it the room name. So now we are sending this event to all the clients that are in the A room. And then likewise, we do the same here for room B. And we send the B count in this case. So we still have to implement a disconnect. Uh, let's leave that for, uh, for a second phase. Uh, let's go ahead and implement the, uh, the client first. So public index.js and now we need to do a room count event. It receives the count and here we can uh, again log uh, there are count clients in my room let's say so let's see how that looks so let's connect one client and there is one total client and one client in my room. So far, so good. Let's see what the second client gets. So this client uh, apparently went to the same room as the first. So if we now look at the first client, uh, it also received the two updates. 
So let's try one more. And let's see. Uh, once again, uh, this, this all three apparently are in the same room. Let's make sure that the updates were sent. Okay, let's keep going. Eventually we should get one that goes to a different room. Uh, okay, there we go, finally. So now we have four connected clients and we have one client in this second room. And if we look at the previous three, they, they did receive the broadcast uh, with the total number of clients, but they did not receive the, uh, the room count event because that went to the other room. Uh, let's do just one more. Oops. And uh, let's see what we get here. And this one went also to the second room. So this one uh, has two clients in the room, total of five. Now uh, this one the same. And these three receive the five update, but not the room update. So this is looking great. And we, uh, we are not ready to try the disconnections yet. So, so we have to implement that. So let's go ahead and do it. In the disconnect event, now we need to, uh, to figure out in which room this client is and, and then update the count accordingly. So uh, we have a uh, well, there, there's a SIO the rooms function that takes the user SID and this returns uh, all the rooms the uh, the client is connected to. So we can say if a in the rooms of this client, then a count needs to be decremented. And, and else we can assume that it is in the other room, so B count will have to be decremented. So then we can bring the, the two globals from the connect handler, and then we can also copy the emit. So here when we update the, uh, the counts, we can, uh, we can also send the event to the correct room. And there we go. So this this should be it for uh, for the disconnection. Let's fix this lint error. And perfect. So okay. So this is going to take a moment to reload. And then we can start again. Okay. So uh, so this one reconnected, and we have one and one. Let's open a second one and see where it goes. Uh, so this one went to the other room. So now we have a one in each room. Let's open a third one. This one uh, now went to the room with the second client and the first client uh, is still with uh, with uh, one client in the room. So these two are in the same room. So if I remove one, then it receives the two connected clients and now one client in the room. This is the only one. And this one just received the two connected clients. So this is this is working great. So uh, so this is this is rooms. Uh, one thing that I should mention uh, in this example, I I created a a partition of clients, so a client can be either in room A or in room B. Uh, this is not really uh, required. Uh, the uh, the way you assign clients to rooms is really free form. A client can be in multiple rooms at the same time. Uh, a client can be in no rooms. Uh, different clients can be in different rooms, uh, and uh, th there's really no no pattern. So the, the number of rooms a client can be in is unlimited and uh, you, you can basically create any, any groups or subsets of clients uh, as, as your application needs. So this is it for rooms.